Yo, 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 what up? It's Young Fresco. Uh, I just want to start off, man, by saying I appreciate you for watching the video. And uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you. But uh, let's get this video started. Um, you can see right here I'm setting in my guideline. And I'm using my JRL 1090s. Um, powerful clipper, man. I, lo I love this clipper. I love what JRL produces. And uh, I mean, you, you can see right here, it it's just taking down the bulk so easy, man. It's... It's a great, great clipper. Uh, I actually do have the fade blade on this one, so that is why I'm able to get it down so low, so easy. And I did uh, zero cap it just a, just a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's very easy to do. And uh, yeah, man, you can see right here, just pretty much whatever I did on the uh, other side, I'm doing it on this side, man. And we're doing a mid fade, so I'm keeping the guideline just under the C cup, the arch, uh, the curved line, whatever you want to call it. I know everybody has uh, different terms for it. But um, yeah, man, we, you, you can just see in the video, we just took down all of that bulk. And uh, yeah, right here, I'm using my uh, my Panasonic shaver. It looks kind of like the bronze shaver, but with this one, it has, I believe, four, four uh, foil heads. Um, it's like half the price of the bronze. It's a, it's, it's a great uh, shaver, man. I really love it. And this kid right here, man, his hair is like so thick. I mean, you could just see on the top of his head. It's like, it's, it's thick. Um, right here, I'm going in with my, um, my number two guard and I'm just trying to remove some of that bolt. I already got the, the bottom half of the head shaved. So I have to remove this bolt. So when I start fading, I don't have all that that overhang, you know, getting in the way of the clipper and messing up my sight. Now right here, I'm using my um, my JRL 2020s. These are the fresh fade 2020s, man. These are JRL's newest additions right here. And I'm just setting in my guideline. I'm going up about an inch. Um, I do need to stretch the fade just a little bit with his hair only because it's so thick. So condensing it is just, it's not gonna work. And what you can see right here is I set in the, the guideline one inch high and I'm working my way down and as I'm working down I'm closing the lever little by little and I'm coming back in with my JRL 1090s just because I had that fade blade on it and I'm just knocking out that line you can see it's just it's fading it's disappearing it's blending you know just doing its thing all right so now I'm back over here and I'm going just under where I went with the two guard I'm going in there with my one and a half guard um, right here now I'm using the one guard and I have the lever open and I'm just gonna do the same process that I did when I had the the lever uh, open no guard it's the same process when I'm doing it with the guards I'm just working my way from the top I'm working my way down so I started at the very top with the two then I went down to the one and a half down to the one and then right here you can see I have the half guard and as I'm working my way down, guys, I'm just using um, the lever open and I'm just closing and working my way down. The majority of the time when I'm starting the fade off like this is really just using um, open blade, close, uh, close blade, open blade, close blade. I don't really play with the notches too much just because you can see right here, I like, I'm just trying to get the cut done and then I'm gonna come back in with the, with the finishing details. So the majority of the cuts are already done. I'm back in here, no guard, open blade and the reason why i like using this method and this technique is because it gives me that that safety net you know i don't want to go in you know with the closed blade and then end up taking off way more than i needed to so i prefer to use an open blade and then obviously you know if it's not cutting any hair then you know you go ahead and you close it up and this is all detail work right here guys you know the the system i use it just set the foundation and you can see right here, I got the 1090s and because they cut so much more closer, I'm just using the very corners. The same thing right here, I got the half guard back on and I'm just attacking those little dark spots, man. My client right here, he has very, very thick hair. So the places where he do does get dark spots, like that indent right there that almost everybody gets in the, in the corner of the head. I forget what it's called, but we'll figure that out later. But that area right there, it, it gets so, thick like the hair just smushes in together 
I love using this little technique right here where I um, just pop the guard off and just hold it with the, with the brush in my hand. Um, it just it just keeps me from having to turn back around and pick up the guard, you know, I just keep it right there on hand. Um, pretty much the half guard is like my detail guard and I, obviously if I can't get down low enough, I'm gonna pop it off and I'm gonna use that open blade. But uh, yeah, man, you see the blade came out pretty tight, man. And you can see right there in that little corner, that that's that dark spot I'm talking about, that, that dip. Everybody gets those dips. Those are like the toughest spots in the head to do. And I'm just going back in right here with the shaver. And just for the, the sake of the video, you know, I'm just doing um, right side, back side, and then uh, left side. Normally when I use this technique, I just work my way all the way around the head and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, you see right there how I'm using that angle. That's a good way to avoid having to go and pick up bigger guards. You just kind of tilt the, the clipper into an angle and it, it, it has like this effect where you have like a, a longer guard on um right here uh same thing like i did on the the right side i just got the uh, blade open and you see right there i had closed it and i'm just working my way down little by little guys um look at that i say that that line is almost gone i could still see a little bit of a faint line but i'm you know um i'm about to go back in there with the the 1090s right there and remember i uh, this one with the 1090s it has a fade blade that's why i'm able to get so close to it now that's why i'm able to get that zero line out with my uh, jrl 2020s right here that i'm using i don't have a fade blade this is a taper blade i prefer the taper blade when it comes to um the fading just because i'm able to give it that 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 nice flick out motion and you see right here i got the one guard back on and it's the same technique that i use on the other side guys i'm just working my way down starting off with a two work my way down to the one and a half right here i believe that was the the one guard and now this is the half guard and every time i jump down to the the lower guard i always start off open blade close blade open blade close blade it's the same system um again it, it, it this all of this right here is just setting down the foundation and you see right there i don't know if you, you noticed it but i'm making it very obvious um, with the brush when i'm doing the blending in the beginning i'm using a comb i use a comb because i'm just trying to knock out the hair get it out of the way and then once i set this foundation to the cut like you see uh right here i come in with the brush now I, the reason why i do that is because i got to get all that hair out the way and i can't use a brush because the brush is just gonna get clogged up so i use the comb to knock all the hair out Peep, peep the technique right there man i call that the floater i just kind of glide over the the hair um but yeah guys i i use the comb to knock all the hair out the way and then i use the brush to brush all the all the hair out because the hair does get stuck between all the follicles all the pores and between all the other hairs and stuff so the brush is for detailing the comb is for setting the foundation and you can see right here i got i got that half guard right back in i believe it's open i think i just closed it right there maybe midway but um we're using the corners, you know, just corner cutting, corner cutting. That's that. That's where the details come in. You just use them corners. You use the full blade, the whole clipper, to its most to just get the get the um, the cut pretty much done. But you use the details. I mean, the corners, the detail, like I am right here with the 1090s. Uh, yeah, you got got to dust the client off. Um, little situation we got in the shop. We don't have a compressor, so I have to use that duster. I'd much rather have a compressor, but the shop is brand new, man. It's beautiful. Um, the owner, he's just over there in the left-hand corner. You know, he's working to get things done, man, and he's doing a great job with the shop. Um, right here, I'm spraying down the hair because um, he is getting a comb over, so I want to part the hair away from what is going to be getting cut, and I'm just kind of sectioning it off right there. Now, my client, he... Um, he likes the comb over style, but they don't. He doesn't really want to have too much of that overhang. But we do want to leave it dark. So right here, I'm actually using my number three guard, and I'm going in with the three guard, uh, just because his hair is so thick, so dense, and so dark. We can get away with that three. Normally, if you use like a two or one and a half, and uh, sometimes you know barbers, you know we run up all the way up to that part. You kind of get like that that light view, but. His, his hair's thick, man. So a uh, three works. And right there, I just did the uh, number two. Just got rid of all that bulk and I'm coming in with this half guard. Now I'm gonna apologize right now, guys. The video will cut off. When I was recording, I didn't realize that um, 
I don't I don't know what happened. My camera just kind of stopped recording, so I didn't get to um, film this whole section right here, which which is really disappointing because I because I wanted to. But it's the same technique. It's the same method that I use on both uh, previous sides, the right and the back. The technique doesn't change. You know, it's it's the same method. You know, we we set in the guideline, we work our way down, and we just kind of detail it up right there. Now I'm over here in the front, um, just trying to match up the the left to the right, right to the left, and you see right there, you know, I'm doing. Oh man, my uh, my mic turned off right there. But uh, anyway, man, we you know we're gonna we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep it moving. Uh, right here, I'm already getting his lineup going. I got right here the uh, Andes T outliner. This isn't the original blade. This I believe is a GTX blade for the the outliner. Uh, I actually ended up buying this one off of my boy uh, Ricky Cuts. Uh, check out Ricky Cuts on Instagram. Um, dudes like crazy with like the clippers and stuff, man. He knows how to like fix them up and mod them and stuff like that. Get them, get them all set right. Now, um, I'm right here spraying down the hair. We getting ready, you know, to cut it down. And like, just look at it, man. Like his hair is just like crazy thick, man. Like, like just feeling it and holding it in your hand. Like, man, like the hair splinters I get from this guy is, is unbelievable. But uh, right here, I'm uh, just pulling up the hair and you can see how I'm kind of cutting it in the angle. I didn't want to cut. You don't want to cut like just flush. You know, you want to cut it at an, at an angle because when the hair lays over, it has that little nice taper effect. You know, you don't see it too, too bulky. Um, with his hair, obviously I'm gonna have to go in there and kind of thin it out a little bit. But you can see right here, I'm just working in the sections. I did um, in the video on the right side, I cut first and I went in the center and now I'm right here and I'm just kind of pulling it, piecing it together to the to the fade. And I'm just kind of grabbing that hair in the back and just angling that right there, blending it in from what we did in the back. Um, yeah, man, his hair, it's just, it's so thick. But just doing a little bit of, a little bit of detail work right there, a little bit of some, uh, what do you call it? Distancing, not distancing. Man, what's the word? Over directing. Yeah, I was doing a little bit of over directing right there. And same thing right here, man. You can see I'm just kind of cutting off those little corners. I'm just blending the rest into it. Not getting my little shear work game going. You know that shear over comb. <laughs> nah, man. This no, no matter what, man. I ha I have to go back in there and I have to touch it up with um with the thinning shears. Right here is a cool little technique. I learned this off of a, a colleague of mine. Um. Sometimes we have we have too much bang, so I just kind of like to brush it there in the front and just kind of cut it and give it like that nice shape. So when it does lay over, it lays over real nice. Now I'm back in here, man. I got my thinning shears. And like I said, I, with his hair, we have to thin it out. If we wanted to get it to, to lay right, we got to thin it out. And I don't take it all the way um, to, the, to the scalp. I just go about mid um, hair length, mid shaft, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And right here, I'm just kind of texturizing it up in the front. I'm kind of using the slithering motion, but with the thinning shear. So when we put some gel in and we style it, it looks real nice. I believe right there, I got the number two guard on. I seen it was just a little bit bulky. So I just want to go back in there and just touch that up, fix it up real nice. And you can see right there, he's got a couple little, little dark marks. But hey, man, that, that's what the details come in, man. And that's what separates you from other barbers is the is the uh, the detail work you know you gotta have an eye for this you know you gotta you gotta look out for all those low imperfections and perfect them as much as you can and that's what's gonna set you apart from the rest of the competition and yeah man right there open blade and i'm telling you that he's, he gets those little dark spots there in the in the corners of the back of the head I, I can't remember what that's called what that part of the head is called but i'll figure it out and we'll get the proper uh vocabulary later on in the videos <laughs> but um yeah man i'm new to this youtube thing man i'm really enjoying it um the editing is fun uh recording you know it's a little bit tricky but you know i'm gonna get i'm gonna get the hang of it man you know i, I really put my heart and my soul into whatever i set my mind fixed on but um anyway let's get back to the uh the video yeah i'm right i got my ti liners right here and you can see i started off in the center i like to start in the center work to one side then jump on the other side and do the same thing and just copycat um right there i'm just looking in the mirror i'm trying to make sure i got the lineup right i just kind of eyeballed it in the beginning but you know 
we got to get the client right. We got to make sure his haircut is on point. And I'm looking at that blend right now, man. It looks good. And I'm going in there and we just, we put in that C cup and we just etching it in there, trying to keep it as natural as possible. Especially when, with guys that have like super coarse thick hair, you want to leave that natural as possible because when that regrowth comes back, it's ugly. Uh, right here is a little technique, man. Like I said, his hair is super thick. So I go in with the foil shaver just to kind of knock it down. So whenever I do go back in with the razor, the razor is going to glide a whole lot more easy. In the past, I have cut him just because his hair was super thick. So I, I have to use that technique when doing his lineup. And look, look, look at that, man. You know, just pulling the skin, getting it nice. We're getting it sharp. It's crispy. Kids looking fresh. <laughs> um, Guys, if you ain't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe, man. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, doing a little bit of backhand work right here. Um, I I do this a lot, man. I don't know, like, I, sometimes I'll, I'll pull up the headrest and I'll lean my client's head back, but I don't know. I, I just kind of prefer using that, that technique right there because then I don't have to do all the rest of that unless, obviously, I'm going to do, like, a full shave or something. But when I'm doing a lineup like this, man, I, I like using that little, that backhand stroke. I think right here I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. We might see it again. Oh yeah, and you gotta make sure you shave right there around the ears, man. Get get all those little hairs. It's real easy to miss that. And doing this method right here with the razor, you you avoid missing any little hairs. You don't get it all. And uh, yeah, man, there we go. We're doing the little the backhand motion. I'm using the brush to hold the hair up. I'm using my thumb to to stretch the skin, man. We're just multitasking and uh, spray this hair down a little bit, man. Get getting it prepped or whatever for the gel. If you ever put gel in dry hair, it doesn't spread right, man. So I always got to wet it down. Just mist it a little bit. Apply that gel. And, man, I, th I think the kid looks good, man. This is the uh, finished product, the end result. And that fade looks blurry, man. I think, I think we did good. Challenging to cut his hair, but I think it looked good. But, hey, man, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching the video. Like it. Subscribe comment give me some feedback let me know what you want to see next and thank you